Hey guys, welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Craig. It is nine o'clock on a Sunday and it's time for another review show special. This week, I'm going to be looking at two new items from Luke Oseland's company, uh, who produces some insanely visual magic. These got launched at the Blackpool Magic Convention and uh, you can get them directly from Luke's site. And they are both tricks by Elliot Bibby. Now, if you don't know who Elliot Bibby is, Go check out the talk magic I did on him a few weeks ago. I interviewed Elliot. He is an incredible magician performing at a very high level. And he's also created a lot of magic. He, he takes a completely different show to the Edinburgh Fringe every single year. He's a very creative guy. And he's now starting to create and release his own magic tricks. He's been lecturing for years. And now he's finally starting to bring out product. And that's great for us because Elliot is a worker. He's somebody who knows what works in the real world. He knows what packs a punch. And his stuff is always super commercial. I remember him being the standout lecturer when I went to the... Uh, um, uh, the IBM uh, convention in 2022. I went there, watched all the lectures. He was the guy that I liked the best. Now, um, what we have here is we have the Bibby Bullet and the Bibby Bottle Opener. Two Bibbies, Bibby Bullet, Bibby Bottle Opener. Um, two really strong, powerful routines. I'm going to give them a review in a minute. But before I do, um, I did an interview with Elliot talking about these two tricks. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to play that interview so you can see the chat that I had with him, very brief chat talking about these two tricks. And then when you've watched that, we'll come back into the studio and I'll give them a full review. Let's first of all, have a look at the interview with Elliot Bibby. So I am here with the creator of the two tricks that we're talking about this week on the review show special, Mr. Elliot Bibby. How are you doing, Elliot? Very good. Thank you. Yeah. How are you? I'm great. Congratulations. Two brand new tricks coming out of Blackpool, being released through Luke Oseland through the Visual Magic Store. You must be excited. I'm very excited. Yeah, I'm very excited to just get it out there to, to everybody uh, at Blackpool and see what they think. I mean, this is something, to, these two routines uh, and projects I've been working on for many years and they're real workers and I know they work. So it'd be, it'd be great to hear the, the feedback from the magic community on well, let's briefly talk about them. And the first one I want to talk about is, is Bibby's Bullet. Now, I went to the IBM Magic Convention in 2022. You were lecturing there. Your lecture was one of the highlights of the whole convention for me. And the standout trick out of everything, and there was some great stuff in that lecture, but the standout for me was Bibby's Bullet. When you performed it, I was just blown away. I had no idea how it was done. I was completely fooled. From my point of view, somebody had signed a card and there was a bloody bullet hole in it. It was amazing. Is that what we have here? Is that the first trick, the one that I saw at the IBM? Yeah, so that one you saw is one of three tricks that are, are on this project. Um, so yeah, as you say, a uh, card selected, uh, signed by a spectator, um, pushed back into the deck of cards. And then uh, the really nice thing about it is, because I'm a worker, I'm out there working, it's all about the spectator. So they do the real magic. So you get them to put their hand at like a gun, you like, it's loaded now, no messing around type thing. And then they just shoot, they pretend to shoot the deck of cards. They can do their best, like gunshot noise. Like, or, 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 it's really good fun. It's a really fun thing to perform. Um, and then you spread through the deck of cards, you, um, face down. They, there's a bullet hole, which is quite clearly through one of the cards. You take it out and you turn it over and it's their signed card. So that's one of the effects on it, yeah. That's great. And what are the other two effects on that? Because I know there's three altogether, isn't there? Yeah. So the other one is um, similar to that, but it's not a signed version. So uh, you can repeat this multiple times. Um, that's a nice thing as well is with that signed version, you get to keep it afterwards. It's a nice little thing. Um, but yeah, this one is just uh, they select the card and you say, right, one card is going to jump out of the deck of cards. Um, I'm going to shoot it in midair. And then I'm going to catch it. So at this point, you uh, you take the deck of cards, they've selected one, place it back in, and you flick it out of the deck of cards, shoot it, and then when you catch it, it's the card that they've selected and it's got the, the hole through it. So you, you're sort of performing that yourself then. Um, yeah. yeah. That's great. That's awesome. And and there's another version on there as well, isn't there, called Name uh, yeah. It? Or, or uh, Name It, is that right? Yeah. So that's the third one, the, the named version. So... This is something I'm really proud of, and it's I've taken inspiration from a few other places, but everything's all credited on there. 
but this is um yeah named cards so you have a deck of cards you say to them and you can just egg this out as long as you want it could be a quick thing name a card or you can say think of a value think of the color and really go down that way um and it is genuinely a free choice it's one in 52 you can name anything at all there's no equivalent for quickie um they just name any card and then you spread through the deck of cards um to the and you take out the card that has a bullet hole in it there's only one and it's the card that they have named uh, there's no rough and smooth there's it's just that's what it is and then you can show the card as well that they are um the rest of the cards don't have any bullet holes in them cool that's amazing and you're known for your technical sleight of hand with cards i mean you know just a few years ago you won the the roby trophy at the ibm uh for for skill with cards but i think it's worth pointing out this isn't difficult at all by any stretch of the imagination is it it's not like yeah. you're going to need to be guy hollingsworth's and you know <laughs> bill malone's love child in order to pull this off this is this is this is a fairly easy thing right yeah this is it's like yeah it's, if you know a top change that's it. <laughs> um, and then that's literally for one of the one of the effects on there. That's the only slight you need, really, a top chain. Everything else is literally like pretty much self-working. Um, yeah, that's the first thing I've thought about that. Actually, yeah, that is the only thing you need, a top chain. That's it. Everything else is self-working. So you can literally take out the packet, practice it a couple of times, and then just go and do it, really. It's, uh, yeah, it's great. That's fantastic. And that is a trick that you've done probably over the last decade at gigs. You know, you're a, for the people that don't know you, go check out your interview on Talk Magic. But you're a really busy worker. You're performing all over the place, uh, probably more weddings than anyone else in Scotland. And this is something that you do every close up job, right? Yeah, every close up job. And it's a great thing as well because it's one of these tricks that it's like it's modular. So at any point you can stop it and something has happened type thing so uh, it's like if you're at a wedding you're about to get interrupted by canopies you can just cut out a phase of it and it's like boom boom done there you go or you can make it go a little bit longer um especially with the with the big bullet thing um it's great as well for close-up but also parlor so i used to perform it in uh, my parlor shows and i would <laughs> this is uh we're talking a while back um, before I had like an actual tech doing my sound effects, but I had uh, Shahid Malik's Sounds Amazing, which was um, a little box that you would program with like 10 sounds in it. So I programmed it with like a gunshot sound. I then had wires running in down my leg to like a toe switch inside my shoe. So, and then I had Vapor, which was the smoke device up the other arm. <clears throat> so I'd hold the deck of cards, <clears throat> excuse me, I'd hold the deck of cards, They'd pretend to shoot it. The gunshot noise would go off. Smoke would come from the deck, um, and then you'd spread through. And so you can add in all these extra things. Um, I used to give people like a, a cat gun, so they'd shoot it and they'd get like a bang going off. And so it's just a really fun thing to perform. Um, yeah, you can add in all these little things as well to, to make it. That's great. That's fantastic. Real worker. And then uh, the other one is Bibby's. Uh, uh, bottle bottle yeah. <laughs> and you describe this to me as something that would be perfect if you work behind a bar or in a social setting but i could yeah. see a lot of close-up workers using this in gigs as well um yeah. i really could because obviously you could multi-phase this and you could use it with multiple bottles and have lots of different uh multiple bottle caps and have lots of different stuff going on but I mean, it's such a clever idea. Can you quickly synopsize that for us as well, Elliot? Um, yeah. So oh, got I'll show you the uh, the actual prop itself. So you have um, your bar blade like this, and uh, you have so that's custom custom made bar blade. You have a, a gimmick bottle cap as well. Everything's all included, and uh, yeah, you basically show the bottle cap. So you could be doing something with bottle caps that you say. Um, you could even just produce a bottle of beer uh, in a magical way in the download. We talk about that as well. Um, the tutorial, different ways to produce the bottle. And then you just open it up, you take the cap, uh, you make the cap vanish using the bar blade as sort of like a magical wand. And then the cap actually appears printed on the bar blade itself. So it's printed on there, it can't come off. You can hand that out for inspection. 
and then you can actually take it off again. You show it blank and you actually have the cap again. So uh, there's three different handlings on it that we teach. I go into a lot of depth with that uh, and also some other ideas as well on that as well. So it's a really fun thing to just have in a drawer. You could have it on you if you're using it like a multi-phase thing, like you say, with other effects. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's a great thing to have for like a gigging magician or a bar magician or even like a hobbyist or an amateur, just have it in your drawer for like a house party or a barbecue or something like that. Just a quick little thing anywhere that there's sort of like beers around. Yeah, absolutely. And and it, it is it designed to be a key fob? Does it go in keys? Was I saw... um, it can be going in keys as well. You can actually, I mean, it's quite a big thing. So you'd have to have a lot of keys in it, but yeah, it's a, uh, you could have it. There's a little hook on the top. You can have yeah, it keys right. as well. Um, it's a nice little thing. That's cool. That's that's really good. Really good. Brilliant. So these are going to be available at the Visual Magic Store. You're yeah. going to be deming for the whole three days, aren't you? So you're going to be there for the yeah. whole three days. <laughs> Demin, Demin, Demin needs the death. And and I, I was speaking to Luke. There's only limited quantities, so if yeah. either of these are because a lot of them are made made by hand, aren't they? Like so. If, yeah, the booby bullet stuff is. I mean, and all most of Luke's stuff as well is all made by hand. Um, I mean, I the booby bullet. I, you get ten gimmicks uh, in there as well. There is refill packs, but we won't have them at Blackpool. But you can get them off the website. Um, but on the actual download itself, it teaches you how to make the gimmick cards as well. So um, if you're lazy, just come and buy them. But if you like the DIY crafty sides, because um, there's a lot of painstakingly hours and hours of um, of trial and error of how to put a hole in a card. You'd think it'd be pretty straightforward how to just burn a hole in a card, but the card all warps and it's a nightmare. So there's a lot of research and stuff that's gone into that. And I've just given it away teaching it. To you uh, on the project so you can make them all that's yourself right. so yeah that's but yeah everything's all handmade for you as well so it's all there ready to go wow so availability is limited it will be on the site after blackpool but if you want to yeah. pick it up at blackpool make a beeline over to the visual magic store because the, you can't guarantee that they're going to be there the whole time no i think once after the first few hours and the word gets round, and especially as well for the price of it, we've luke has guided me on this and i reckon they're just going to fly out to be honest with you so so do I. Yeah. So do I. I think this is uh, going to be a sleep hit at the convention, Elliot. I think they're really good. Um, so if people are watching this and they're not in England, they are going to be able to get them from your website or from the Visual Magic Store after Blackpool. I'll put a link down to your website down below. Um, but I'm going to take it back into the studio now and give them a full review. But Elliot, thank you very much for telling us about uh, about about the two new routines. They 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 sound amazing. Thank you. So first of all, thank you very much to Elliot for that. I really appreciate it. Thank you for uh, uh, sitting down and finding the time to chat to me. I'll say the same thing to you that I said to Elliot. I am 100% unbiased when it comes to these reviews. I do consider Elliot a friend. However, that doesn't stop me from telling you exactly what I think about his tricks. Um, the first trick that we're going to talk about is the Bibby bottle opener. So what is the Bibby bottle opener? Well, basically, it is a bottle opener that you can carry around with you that allows you to take a, uh, a bottle cap and you can literally make the bottle cap fly onto and permanently stick to the bottle opener. And then you can just as easily pull it off. Now, it's about a 20 minute, half an hour tutorial. And in that tutorial, you're going to learn how to do exactly that. So you're going to learn how to take a bottle opener, show it both sides, take a bottle cap and boom, throw it on there. And as soon as it does, it sticks on there and immediately pull it off and show both sides of the bottle opener. Now, this is a really clever concept. There's a few different um, ideas at play here is using paddle moves, is using various different vanishes and techniques. But what's nice about the tutorial is Elliot goes through various different ways of doing this. So he goes through ways that are very, very easy. Then he goes through ways that are a little bit more complicated. So depending on where you are with your coin magic and your ability level when it comes to sleight of hand, you can, um, you know, you can, you can basically go in whichever direction that you want to go into. Now, uh, one of the, the, one of the most visual handlings is a version of the striking vanish by David Williamson. He literally takes the bottle opener and takes the bottle cap and does that 
and it goes on there and your hands are empty and you can see it's on there. You can feel it and then boom, you can pull it off. It looks really good. Now, Elliot talks about how this could be done really as a social thing, like you have the bottle cap in the bottle opener and the bottle cap in your pocket. And when you're at a garden party or something, you can pull the bottle, you can pull the bottle opener out and do it anytime, you know, during that party over and over again. I think this would make a great opener if you're a strolling magician. I think this would make a great opener if you're a banquet magician. I think this would make a great opener if you're a bar magician. I think that this is the perfect opener because it is is what I think is important for an opener. It's quick, it's visual, it's different, it uses props that they're not aware of, that, that uh, you know, don't look like a traditional magician's props, and it's over in a couple of seconds. It grabs people's attention. Now, I'm going to do a performance of this in a second, but I've gone in a slightly different direction with this, and how I've gone into the uh, direction of it is um, I've combined it with a couple of pen and coin moves. So I go through uh, making it disappear, and I say that the bottle opener is a magic wand and I make the bottle cap disappear and then I make it come back and then I do a little transpo and then I put it onto the bottle opener and I'm not using a visual appearance on there there's lots of ways of doing it as a visual thing but because I'm doing it as kind of a multi-phase thing I've chosen not to use a visual approach to pushing it on there I do pull it off visually but I don't throw it on there visually but that's because I'm wanting to use it as kind of a multi-phase thing and and I really like the way of doing it this way because in about a minute I've got like four or five moments of magic and things are changing places and they're jumping back and forth so for me this is an absolute great way to do it but you don't have to do it this way i'm going to show you the way that i've been performing it and i've actually gone and done this at gigs now and it gets a great reaction and i and it is a great opener but you don't have to do it this way you can if you want to this is an insane social media trick uh this one is an insane social media trick so you could do it just for social media if you wanted to boom but it's one of those rare tricks that works for social media but it just as well works in a real world environment as well Cool, right? So let's have a look at uh, my performance of it. This is my performance of the Bibby bottle opener. Okay, Jack, I've got a trick with a bottle cap. Nice. And I've got a trick with a bottle opener. This is the bottle opener. This is the bottle cap. Now, uh, this, is, uh, this, is, this is, I want you to use your imagination. Imagine this is not a bottle opener. I want to imagine it's uh, a magic wand. It's a very funny looking wand. And I want to imagine this bottle cap is a bottle cap. I don't need to imagine. Yeah, that's, okay. that's fairly easy. <laughs> uh, this is kind of like a magic trick for um, alcoholics. Because what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the bottle cap. I'm going to I'm going to throw it around in the air, <laughs> catch it. Hopefully, nobody noticed my uh, stupidity, and I'm going to make it disappear. Watch. All I have to do is tap. I'm still there. I can feel it. All I have to do is tap. Ooh. And when I do, ooh, you, that was, <laughs> ooh, yes, the bottle cap has vanished. Now, it's still there. You can't see it. The reason I know it's still there is because if I tap, it comes back again. What? I know. Now, I'll tell you how it works. Go on. Okay. Very, very simple. I'll repeat the trick, and this time, I'll tell you how it works, right? Okay. And you're not meant to repeat a trick in magic. First time, it's entertainment. Second time, it's educational. But I'm going to do it again. I'm going to put it in my hand. I'm going to tap it with this. And when I do, it's going to vanish. Remember, I put it in my hand, I tap it with this, and when I do, it va you get the idea, right? I think so. So watch. I just tap it like this. And when I do, it becomes invisible. Huh. It's still there. You can't see it, but it is still there. It's just invisible. And I know this because if I tap again, do you know what happens? It's not visible anymore? No, it becomes back. Oh. You know what's really weird though? Awesome. If I rub it like this, Woo. what actually happens is it, <laughs> it turns into the bottle. And do you know why? why? It's because the, uh, the caps up there, they actually change places. Fuck. I know, right? So did you believe the whole it's turned invisible thing? You shouldn't do it because it's rubbish. Uh, that's not how it works. I'll tell you actually how it works now, okay? Okay. I really will. It's very simple. When I tap like this, it looks like it's invisible, doesn't it? Yeah. It's not. I just stuck it to the other side. What do you mean? Well, look, there it is. <laughs> look, I just stuck it there. That's how it works. I just, I just don't even feel it if you want to. That is literally on there. It, it really is. Now, if you want to pull it off, all you have to do is grab it like that <laughs> and you, you can pull it off and you're left with uh, a bottle opener you're left with a bottle cap 
And that, my friend, you can keep that as a souvenir. That's magic. Oh, it's gone again. How weird's that? So there you go. That's my performance of the Bigby Bottle Opener. Like I said, I've taken more of a sleight of hand approach to it with multiple transpositions. But that's because when I was playing with it, that's how I felt it would work best for me. And, you know, I talk about this all the time. What you have to do, really, as a magician, is you have to make tricks your own. I think that's really important to do. Um, but... I love this. I think this is great. I think the nice thing about this is that if you get it, there's going to be lots of different ways that you can actually use this. And I think that uh, uh, the organic nature of the props means that it's going to appeal to a lot of magicians. I think this is a really fun routine. Elliot's worked everything out. I'm going to give this 95%. I think this is really good. So um, that's your first trick. This is the Bibby bottle opener. 95%. Well done. Really cool trick. Uh, highly recommended to everybody. If you saw the performance, if you like what you saw, get it. So now we're going to be looking at the second one, which is Bibby's Bullet. So let's talk about Bibby's Bullet, which is a trick that I saw him perform at the IBM convention in Eastbourne in September uh, 2022. I saw him perform this, and as soon as I saw Elliot perform this, I knew I wanted to perform it myself. I was like, oh my gosh, that is such a really cool trick. It's basically an invisible bullet type trick where you have somebody fire a gun or fight, you know, that sort of thing. And uh, the card that they picked ends up with a bullet hole through it. Now, I've seen gaff decks that achieve this same thing. So I've seen a, a, a trick with a gaff deck where every single card is gaffed. Uh, this is not that. This is uh, not this, this, there you go, this is great because it's one single card that you can add to the deck anytime you want to. You can add this card to the deck or you can have it in position if you want to use it as an opener. You get, you get the card signed. You then, at the end of the trick, you give this card away as a souvenir. They don't need it anymore. Um, you give it away as a souvenir and, and you're done. So again, it's a very interesting approach. And, and, and on the tutorial, Elliot goes through all the different ways that you can actually use these uh, use this prop. So you could use it. And, and there's loads of different um, ideas and loads of different concepts. Again, Elliot is a great teacher. But if you don't like the idea of using your fingers, you can use, uh, you know, like a starter pistol and actually have a bang. There's a laser gun, that sort of thing. But um, Elliot gets a lot of comedy out of using, getting somebody to go, pew, you know, and kind of building that up. And it is a very interactive, fun routine. Now, just like with a lot of the stuff that Elliot puts out, it's very easy to do. There's just one move. Um, it packs small, it plays big. Um, you're giving away an incredible souvenir. It's an interesting hook, even though it's a card trick. It's very different to normal card tricks. Um, and, you know, if you carry a few of these in your pocket, it's repeatable. You can just grab another one, put it in the deck and do it again. Now, you get about 10 of these, 10 or 15 of them pre-made, but Elliot's going to show you how to make them yourself. This is not like splitting a card. This is actually a really easy gimmick to make. So uh, you can make them yourself or you can just buy more of these. It's completely up to you. But you can sit down with a deck of cards and easily make up like an entire deck full of these in an hour. And then you've got a ton of gaffes. Absolutely not a problem at all. Uh, I'm going to show you a performance of it. So this is a performance of Bibby's Bullet. Hello. It's a card trick. Yep. Now, I know you like to, a little secret for everybody who's watching this but didn't realise, you like cosplaying. I do. And you go to Comic-Cons and things like that from time to time. Uh, and you once went as <coughs> Agent something or other. 47. 47, uh, which is a hitman, right? Yep. Have you ever gone as like a, uh, and, and that hitman, did you carry a gun with you? No. I didn't want to get arrested. You didn't want to get arrested, but <laughs> obviously as a hitman, you would have had a gun. Yeah. So you've had experience cosplaying as a hitman. I'd say so. So therefore, if I asked you to be a hitman in this little story that we're weaving, you won't have a problem? No. Good. So we need, um, we, we've got, uh, I'm going to hire you to do a hit for me. Okay, you are the hitman. I'm going to hire you to do a hit. And we're going to decide on who... We're going to hit. We have 52 possible people that I hate here. And one of them you're going to take out for me, okay? Um, so, just say stop. Stop. Uh, this one right here. It doesn't really matter who it is. The King of Diamonds. I've got to shoot the king. You've got to shoot the king, dude. This is uh, oh, exciting no. stuff. You're going to shoot the king. I'll leave it. Oh, uh, can you uh, take that pen for me, please? And, uh, and just maybe put your, uh, your initials on it, just so you know who the target is. Maybe assign it Agent 47. No, I'll just put my initials. 
<laughs> oh, that would have been way more interesting for the plot if you'd done that, but that's absolutely fine. So we're going to put him in there. You can see him going there into the deck. Yep. You can push him in yourself. There he is, your sign card going right into the... Boop, we've even got sound effects. <laughs> Wonderful. So we're going to put him over here. He's standing in a, in a, in a crowded mall. This is the crowded mall. 52 people in there. And he's there. But you can see him. And the reason you can see him is because you have the vantage point. You're standing in the rafters. And you have a sniper rifle on you. Nice. And you can see the king. Yep. Mr. King of Diamonds. You can take him out. So what I want you to do, this is where you use your imagination. I want you to pretend you're holding a sniper rifle. That was amazing. I mean, that was just way beyond what I was expecting. And don't forget, it doesn't have a silencer on it. I should point that out. So when you take out the king, I want to hear the, the actual sound that would occur when you took out the king. Can you do that for me? Um, I, if I had somebody else here, they'd be holding the deck, but you can, um, um, you can, yeah, I'll hold it for you. But don't shoot me, just get the king. Are you ready? Okay. When you're ready, take the shot. <laughs> that was great. That was amazing. You can keep the imaginary weapon, it's yours to keep. How do you reckon you did? I think I got him straight in the head. Well, let's have a look, let's have a look, let's have a look. There's one card that's been a bit singed. Oh. One card with a bullet hole. Oh, I got him. One card right there with a bullet hole, one card only. And that would have been the marked man himself with your initials on. There he is. And I tell you right now, Jack, you can have that as a souvenir because every good killer always keeps a souvenir when they take somebody out. So that's yours to keep forever. Oh, Mr. Sid. So there you go. That's Bibby's bullet. And really, there's nothing else to say about this trick. It's very, very commercial, just as you would expect from Elliot Bibby. You, and just as you would expect from, um, you know, Luke Osland. You know, he only releases stuff through his company that he considers to be really good and visual. It's good and visual, but it's also super commercial. Uh, you could do it in any environment. You could do it anywhere, and it would work really well. When I saw Elliot do it, he did it in front of like 100 magicians uh, on a stage. You could do it in a strolling environment to two people. You could do it to 15 people in a, a, a parlor show environment. It's great. You saw the performance. Go check out the trailer. If you like what you saw, there's no surprises. It's a nice thing to have in your top pocket and right time, right place. It'd be great. I've got a gig for a bunch of paintballers next week. You better believe I'm going to be doing this. This is going to be uh, brilliant. There's lots of different places that you could, you could do this and you can get a really good reaction from it. And I love the fact that the card is signed and you can very easily make replacements. That's why I'm going to give this 90%. I really think that this is a super commercial trick and this really does does belong in the same set as you know all the things we consider classics in magic you know like the ambitious card the coins across the double cross all of those the omni deck all the card to wallet all these things card to mouth all these things that magicians do this is just as strong and commercial as all of them uh, and it's very easy to do as well so 90% it's a great trick uh, two great tricks by the wonder wizard that is Elliot Bibby so there you go, guys. That's another review show special in the bag. Do me a favor. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Now, you want to see more videos like this, like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment down below. If you haven't already done so, go check out the Q&A. It went live at 12 o'clock today. And go and check out The Netrix. That's www.thenetrix.com. That's www.thenetrix.com. Over 300 tricks, hundreds and hundreds of slides. Go and see what all the fuss is about, and I'll be back again soon. Thank you so much for watching. My name's Craig from Magic TV.